Pokemon Legends Arceus, the next-gen open-world game everybody is talking about. This title will release in only 10 days. Will it be a hit or a miss? That, my friends, we don't know yet. I am already super excited about it though, and you should be too. Hey, what's up guys? This is Foryam, and in today's video, I will talk about 5 exciting things to look forward to in Pokemon Legends Arceus, based on the latest gameplay footage we saw, but also break down things you might have missed and even speculate about possible extra in-game features. I've divided everything we're gonna talk about in this video in 5 categories, so guys, let's get right to it. First off, gathering and crafting. Gathering and crafting will play a huge role in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Thank god, because this is really what I expected for a open world type of RP game. At first, I wasn't very excited about this feature, because based on past footage we saw, it looked pretty simple, like some basic stick and rock gathering, but thank god it is so much more than that. You can actually use your Pokemon to break rocks, gather minerals and ores from those, or even shake trees to get your hands on acorns and whatnot, or even gather flowers or other plants. In this shot we see the player crafting a Pokeball with one apricorn and one tumblestone, which are both gathered from breaking ores and hitting trees, while you can also make healing items like a potion. This costs one orange berry and one medicinal leak. How cool would it be if you can, for example, use the apricorns for different types of pokeballs? The tumble stone might determine the quality of the ball, so if you use other types of materials, then you can of course craft different pokeballs. Well, the medicinal leak is probably going to be for more healing items, possibly an antidote or a paralyzed heal. Yeah man, I'm really looking forward to this mechanic as it has so much potential, so many different recipes might pop up right here, of course, which you can unlock in the game, something we're going to talk about a little bit later. And guys, before we move on to the next category, Pokemon can also drop resources when you beat them in combat or after you've caught them with a Pokeball. For example, a grass Pokemon could leave behind some leaves or maybe even spores. A flying Pokemon might drop its feathers after losing in combat or maybe if you defeat a Geodude, it will drop some rocks. How cool would that be if you can actually use all those items near the crafting table? Next up, we have hunting and catching. Different Pokemon will pop up on the Hisui region depending on the time of day and also the weather. So if it's daytime you will find different Pokemon in comparison with the night. You can imagine that during the rain more water Pokemon will show up and who knows, a thunderstorm might call for a Pikachu. But that my friends is not everything. The behavior of all the different Pokemon in the Hisui region will also be different. For example a Badoof which you can see in this shot will come to the player because it is curious while a Starly will be skittish and simply run off. And obviously you will also encounter aggressive Pokemon, they will love to pick up a fight. And what I really like about this is that you can't just run off, you actually have to dodge attacks by rolling, you can also distract a Pokemon using berries to make him more relaxed, or use rocks to disorient them. In addition to that, different Pokemon will also have different appetites, so you can actually find out which kind of berry a certain Pokemon will like, and you can use it towards your advantage. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to the combat mechanics in Pokemon Legends Arceus. We've already seen plenty of it. At the same time though, I really like the fact that you can prevent combat in general by just searching for a specific type of berry which you're gonna use in order to tame that Pokemon and then it's gonna be so much easier to catch it. I think that's a really cool feature. I mean, how interesting can this be for, let's say, a pacifist run in Arceus? That would be so cool to see. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it, so definitely make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Of course, if you have thoughts about anything which we're gonna talk about in this video, I'm looking forward to reading them. Anyways, on number 3 we have progression. So completing your Pokédex for the Hisui region is obviously your main objective, catching all the different Pokémon in the game. There is more than it though, right now we actually have different Pokémon variations. On this particular shot, we can actually see two different variants of Starly, a male and a female. They actually have a slightly different shape on their head. So in the Pokédex, you will find pretty much all information you've discovered earlier. For example, the preferred foods for this Pokémon or items which they carry. Because the player is on a pretty low Pokédex level, it currently says insufficient data, so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to find out all the information for every single Pokémon and then you know exactly what you need to do in order to catch them a lot easier. 
Cyndaquil, for example, really likes to eat mushrooms, wheat and peas. He also carries orange berries and spoiled apricorns with him, while Starly prefers honey over mushrooms and who knows which items they might carry. It might be possible that you're not really looking forward to catching the same Pokemon a hundred times or feeding it many different types of food before you actually know what they like or not. Well, I get that. But at the same time, the game already thought of this. To make it as fun as possible, they actually added NPCs which you can interact with, which will pretty much give you tasks and quests to make this so much more fun. Introducing the Medical Core, the Security Core and also the Survey Core. The Medical Core probably leans towards saving injured Pokémon, gathering berries and unlock healing recipes for your adventures. The Security Core, on the other hand, sounds like an organization that wants to protect the Isil region. Maybe you're gonna have to battle trainers with bad intentions, like a Team Rocket kind of thing, or eliminate threats, like a very strong Pokémon. Because there might be a lot of combat involved in the Security Core task line, you might be able to get your hands on combat items right here, which you can give to your Pokémon. For example, a Quick Claw to make it a little bit faster in combat. That would be super cool. And then we also have the Survey Core, which is focusing more towards the exploration of the Hisui region and research Pokémon behavior. Rewards might be new Pokéballs or items to trap and distract Pokémons, like a smokescreen, maybe a net for catching bugs, etc, etc. One thing I'm certain of though is that with some progression, you will be able to explore even more of the world, bringing us to the next category, exploration. The world of Pokemon Legends Arceus or the Hisio region won't be 100% open world like Zelda Breath of the Wild, but will be pretty much divided into zones, which I am okay with. According to this map, there are six regions or zones in total. Basically, we have the Jubilife Village, the base of operations will probably also be a separate region, and based on your progression, I think more regions will be unlocked, and probably the same for the means of transportation. So to the bottom left, we have Jubilife Village, then near Lake Rarity, we have a starting region, which I think is gonna be an introductionary region for the game, with many basic Pokemon like insects and some birds, very easy place to start your adventure on, and after making a little bit of progression, you will probably also unlock the other regions, uh, the one to the right, which is gonna be the Great March, where the mountains probably will have a lot of fire and rock-type Pokémon. In the top right, we have the Lake Valor and Stark Mountain, which covers many water Pokémon. I think after completing this region, you will also unlock Basco Legion, so you will be able to travel to all the different regions a lot easier. In the top left, we have a snowy region, with obviously some ice, water and cave Pokémon. In the center we have Mount Coronet, which will obviously have many cave systems, stony Pokémon, very strong Pokémon and also some legendary Pokémon. It makes a lot of sense after we've completed a certain region, we will also unlock a means of transportation. So say we complete the starter region, we will unlock Weird Deer, so it's gonna be a lot easier to rediscover places where we've already been. Same counts for Basco Legion, surfing to a certain area without actually being ready for it doesn't really make sense and I think Braviary will also only be unlocked after you've already been to all the different mountain tops yourself. Otherwise, it would make unlocking certain things so much easier, pretty much eliminating the challenge. Anyways, let's check out the map, which I think has a very nice interface for some in-depth exploration. So right here, you can easily spot tasks and also quests, which the player has. Boxes or cases can either be a survey or maybe this is gonna be a chest area. I mean, we see a circle around it, so this can either be a zone where we're gonna have to find something or do some kind of investigation for set tasks. And also a cave in the top right there with a quest icon. So without doubt, you're gonna have to enter this one in order to complete a certain mission. Right next to the cave, we actually have a blue tent icon. I am almost certain that this is gonna be a quick travel location based on how the icon looks. I mean, we have a feather right next to it. It also has a different color in comparison with the rest. I mean, how awesome would it be if you can actually set up camp in the wild, decide where you can respawn, make a quick travel point on every zone in the Hisuo region to make it so much easier to travel to a certain location and get your hands on certain Pokemon or materials in the game. I think that would be such an awesome feature and also an essential one for this game. I mean, if we look at the rest of the map, you don't really see any other camp 
camps. So maybe the other camps are currently hidden. Maybe you can only unlock one camp in the entire region. It would make a lot of sense though that you can also just put up camp in the southeast for example. So you are near Tidewater Dam and the Heartwoods. So it's going to be a little bit easier to gather materials or hunt for Pokemon right there. Say if you want to hunt for a nocturnal Pokemon you can sleep in your camp at that very location and then start hunting right off the bat. Honestly, I am also super glad to see the pinning popping up. I mean, placing down pins is something really awesome. I love this feature in Zelda Breath of the Wild. And honestly, I am so glad they literally copy pasted this feature right into the game. We can already speculate a little bit of what these pins will be for. Basically, the flags will obviously be for a certain objective, something that you want to go to, maybe a landmarker for a village or a camp. The star is without doubt used for hotspots. I mean, maybe there are places with many different rare Pokemon. That's going to be an awesome icon for it. The berry icon will definitely be useful for marking bushes and also trees with different types of berries. Then we have this mineral icon, which we also had in Zelda Breath of the Wild. So many different minerals will pop up in the entire Hisuo region. I think this one will be really nice for it. The Pokeball could be used for a region where you've seen some Pokemon which you haven't caught yet. So that marks the location of interest where you have to go in order to complete your Pokedex. Then you also have the Apricorn icon for some trees probably. And then last but not least, we also have this flame Pokemon with two eyes. I think this one can be used for either Alpha Pokemon, which you'll find in the wild, or possibly a boss fight, which is located somewhere on the map. Honestly, I love this feature and really can't wait to talk even more about it in a speculative way, guys. Breath of the Wild also has these icons, and if we can expect the game to be a little bit similar, I mean, if we think about the Blood or the Red Moon event, which respawns all the items in the game after an X amount of time, how cool would that be for Pokemon Legends Arceus? Say after X amount of time, all the berries you've plucked off the trees will regrow and all the minerals will return to the Hisui region. Or for example, the Pokemon which you've defeated in battle failed to catch pretty much will also respawn. I think that would be a very awesome essential feature to this game. Guys, once again, what do you think? Definitely make sure to leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyways, let's move on to the final category, Depth. So, Jubilife Village will pretty much be the main town for the game, with a medical core, security core, and also survey core, which we already talked about a little bit earlier, but there will be a headquarters to turn in set quests and get your hands, of course, on rewards. Also, you will have the possibility to get your own lodging, which they barely talk about right here. So you can pretty much investigate all the things in the house, the bookshelf, the cooking place, but also your bed. So I think this is going to be a feature to allow you to skip nighttime and make it dawn to make exploration easier. Or maybe you want to specifically make it turn to dusk to catch certain Pokemon which only appear during the night. I mean, that's just one of the many things I can think of when we see this little shot. We also have a cooking place, so maybe we can make our own snacks, which can be useful for combat, or of course, read the books on the site, which can possibly give us even more information about everything we've already explored in our adventures. Not only will we get different NPCs to interact with, for tasks and quests, but we will also get our hands on a clothier, a craftworks and a trading post. First off, the Craftworks. This guy will sell us materials and recipes. Possibly you can buy a new rod right here to catch some water Pokemon, possibly get your hands on camping equipment or maybe even allow it to craft yourself. Next up, we also have the Trading Post, which will allow us to exchange merit points for items and also trade Pokemon with other players. Boy, oh boy, am I looking forward to this. I mean, trading Pokemon with other players does give us some kind of multiplayer and at the same time, Exchange merit points for items. I think this is going to be a really cool daily or weekly vendor. But right now, there is only so much information we know about it. And that, my friends, is not much. I am really looking forward to making a video dedicated exclusively to the training post, the merit system, and of course also the training with other players. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if you agree. I think it's going to be awesome to talk about everything we can expect popping up right here. Anyways, my short take on this vendor would be selling daily and weekly items. So they will refresh every day or every week. It will allow us to get our hands on some pretty awesome new cosmetic items like character customization, which we will get to in a second. But I think it would be really nice to see some items and consumables popping up right here, which are tied to events and maybe even seasons. 
For example, when the game gets released, it's still winter. You can fit your hands on a different type of scarf every single week. So after a couple of weeks playing, you will have all different color variations. And during the summer, you can buy slippers or a Hawaiian shirt. I don't know, but there is so much potential for this. I am really looking forward to talking about this more in depth, which we're definitely going to do. But um, the merit system, of course, is tied to that. And I think it will involve a lot of training with other people, doing tasks and objectives pretty much play a lot in the game will give you some rewards. I think logging in every single day will give you some merit points and doing certain tasks, daily or weekly challenges will also give you some of those points. And then last but not least, we also have the clothier. So basically, if you can get some new cosmetics, if you want to change your hair or something, the clothier is where it's at to customize your character even more. The hat gives you the opportunity to change your hat or go for a cap. The chest, uh, right here, we can see that the player is equipping different types of kimonos. You also have different trousers. And then we also have the body icon right there. So I think you can also choose uh, between full outfits pretty much so you don't have to equip something different for all the different slots then also feet i think honestly they look horrible i mean look at these things that the character is wearing right now they look like shrek's face two times man bro please remove this from the game anyways i am really looking forward to customizing my character i've always loved customization in games and i think these basic things already make up for a pretty awesome extra feature you also have different hairstyles hair color and even i Brow color. I mean, there is plenty of stuff to choose from right here to make your character look unique, to make it stand out pretty much on your live stream or whatever. But um, I think you're gonna have to be a little bit careful as well. You probably won't be able to change your skin tone or your gender. That is probably something that's gonna be tied to your save file forever. And if you want to change it entirely, you're probably gonna have to make a new character. Again, I think the training pose will be an awesome addition to the character customization. I mean, if we look at this very shot right here, in the middle you have this cloth hanger icon right next to the survey corpse style. I think this is actually one you either buy via the training post or have to unlock with tasks or missions throughout the game. If we speculate a little bit more, how cool would it be if you can actually buy a gender change token or a name change token at the trading post? I mean, there are so many possibilities. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Whew, that pretty much concludes my recording for today. Everything I pretty much wanted to say about Pokemon Legends Arceus. You can tell that I am super excited to checking out the game. I will definitely start streaming this bad boy since day one. And of course, make a lot of content, many guides for it. And um, yeah, I am really looking forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about my speculative take on these features? Are you also looking forward to playing Pokemon Legends Arceus? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, right now, now it is 4am out guys a big thanks for watching definitely make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed watching this one and of course if you are new to the channel don't hesitate to subscribe as it is entirely free and there is so much more coming your way I'm really looking forward to talking about the merit point system and the trading post next time which allows you to trade Pokemon with other people I want to wish every single one of you guys a very awesome day and hope to see you on the next video or live stream take care peace